So this is the first of the two trout I caught today. And we're going to start off doing is taking the guts out, head off, and I'm not going to descale it because so I'm going to take off the skin later. Now the way I take the guts out is like this. Make a cut from the head down past that fin there. One side all the way to the bone. And the same cut on the other side. Try not to cut into the guts as much as possible. So here I'm all the way down to the head. I'll put the heel of the knife on the spine, chop through that, and then you can navigate the guts out of the fish. And all this I will not use, I'll go into the bin. There are uses for it, the cheeks are really nice, but I'm not going to do anything with it on this occasion. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to chop the tail off. I'm going to use the tail as a trout shank. So more or less here, just in between those two fins. Come back to this bit later. I'm going to cut to the bone here, but not through the bone. I do not need. In here, I can cut down to the bone slice along the bone. Open that up. And a lot of the inspiration for this is from a cook called Josh, Josh Neeland, Australian cook, who approaches taking apart a fish the same way as you would taking part an animal, fish butchery. He's got a book called The Whole Fish, which I highly recommend. And you can take skin off. 
Using knife, cut just under the skin. So here you have the trap shank, um, which I use to pan fry. It's really nice just to pan fry in some butter. And apparently the gelatins in the spine, in the bone, will give it some extra flavor as they release once that's been cooked. That's one part. Now with these two trout I caught today, I'm going to use one to cold smoke and the other I am going to confit. The small bits there when you're pan frying the, the tail, you can use those as well. You can save them up, give them to the cat, whichever you want, but it's a waste to throw them away. here is going to look at the cavity of the belly it starts about there near that point and on the other side here starts around there so what I'm going to do is try and cut a relatively thick or fillet of, a, of equal thickness because often if you cut the fillet off just like that you've got the belly which is a lot thinner which should be done more quickly I'm going to find another use for that. So you cut down from here. You're going to cut onto the ribs, but not through the ribs. You can feel your knife going onto the ribs. You can hear that as well. Once you've made that cut, turn your knife and cut down from the ribs.
so the belly separated like that. And you're going to do the same on the other side. So here you've got the belly, two little fins there. And that meat is quite fatty, uh, but it's it's really nice to smoke. It's a bit, I mean, with a fish of this side, it's a bit too much to, to cold smoke. What I do is I hot smoke them and I use them, I flake the, the meat off and I use it in pasta sauces. So you make a nice creamy pasta sauce with a uh, smoked belly. Just get the flakes off and put them in the, in the sauce. Now here we're going to cut the fillets from. So with a filleting knife, or a sharp knife, we're going to cut to the spine. And she's there, she's got to navigate around the and the ribs. Cutting through the pin bones. And that's, that's your fillet. So the pin bones are still in here, right there. You can hear them. I'll have to get those out later with tweezers. And then we'll do the same on the other side. And that's the other fillets. So we're left with the back. All that. Get rid of. There's one rib that I cut through accident there. There we go. What 
going to do with those. I'm going to put them in the fridge for a few days and just let them dry age. And once those have dry aged, I'll take the pin bones out. My guess is that as the fibre tissue breaks down a little bit, the pin bones will be easier to get out without breaking them. That's the other one done. So I'll have to clean all this a little bit. What I have here four fillets. Two bellies and two shanks. Should pan fry those two. Two of those I'm going to cold smoke, and the other two I'm going to cook sous vide. So these two fits I'm going to cold smoke. What I'm going to do first is take out all the pin bones. I used to use ordinary tweezers, but these slightly more heavy duty, bigger fish tweezers, which are given to me by some friends, are amazing and much easier to use. Here I've got a mixture of brown sugar and sea salt. like so. And that will help take out a lot of moisture and cure the fish partly. So if I were making gravlax I'd probably also add some herbs, maybe some lemon rind. Dill is always a favourite. And I would turn them upside down, put some foil on there, put some weights on there so that the fish is weighted down on a lot more pressure. But for now, I'm just going to leave them like this overnight. Put them in the fridge. Get back to that tomorrow. So here you can see the fillets that I dry brined yesterday. These have been in the fridge now for about 14 hours with the salt and brown sugar mixture that I put in, put on them yesterday. And you can see all the moisture that's come out. So what I'll do now is I will wash them down, rinse them off, dry them and put them in the fridge <clears throat> just so that they can form a nice little, or dry off, form a nice little crust. And then I'll smoke them tonight. So that's them washed down and petted dry, just with some kitchen uh, kitchen paper, kitchen towel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up uh, loosely and just leave it in the fridge for a few more hours. And so when we smoke it, then a nice crust will form on the outside. I'm not sure if it's called crust, that's the right terminology, but if the outside is damp, it won't. It won't smoke as well. So here I've got the trout. It's been in the fridge for a few hours. Quite a, lost quite a lot of moisture, and I am now going to cold smoke that. So what I'm going to use to cold smoke it is cold smoking tube. I'm going to put the bottom of my grill. I'm going to fill it with pellets. I'm going to use these applewood smoking pellets. And last time I filled it up completely and it was a bit too smoky for me, so I'm going to fill it up by half now. So I've filled the smoke tube up to there. If I'd have a blowtorch, it would be easier, but I don't have one, so I've just put a lighter in there and lit that. 
going to wait for it to start smoking a little bit. These coals, they don't have a purpose, they're just left over from a previous grill. Uh, they won't catch fire, so they'll just sit there. While the smoke's away, I'm just going to let it burn for a little bit before covering it up. Right now it's January, it's quite cold, it's just a few degrees outside, which is a perfect time to cold smoke because you don't want the grill or the meat or the fish, whatever you're cold smoking, to get too hot. If it gets too hot, uh, bacteria can form and you can get quite ill. So that's not what you want, uh, which is why I like to cold smoke in winter. So as you can see now, the pellets are smoking nicely. The bottom vent of the grill is open and the top vent is going to be open as well. What I'm going to do, just in case, is put the deflectors in. Another tip I can give anyone doing this at home is um, to wear old clothes. So after doing this, your clothes are definitely going to smell of smoke. Now what you could do is put uh, the fish on the grill here for it to smoke. What I'm going to try this time is to hang it from the top of the Kamado from the chimney. I'm just going to close this up now. And you'll see the smoke coming through here. What I'm going to do is put the hook. I'm just going to hook the fish in the side here in the skin. I'm going to hang that in there from here. The other one as well. Just so it's hanging freely, it's not touching anything. And well, that just smokes there for well, two hours or so, three hours. We'll see how it comes out. And the fish has been in here for about an hour now. We're going to let it smoke a bit more until all the pellets have burned out and there's no more smoke. It's dark now and it stopped smoking. So let's have a look at the results. That is one of the smoke fillets. Hence the two fillets smoked. And though they look moist, they're actually quite dry to the touch. <clears throat> so here we have one of the smoked fillets. The skin's really dry. It's been in the fridge. Um, since I smoked it on Saturday, so it's been in the fridge a day and a half. Caught the fish on Friday, brined it overnight to Saturday. Left it to dry in the fridge after the brining for a few hours and then smoked it Saturday night. What I'm going to do now is take the skin off. Uh, the pin bones we already took out before brining. Let's see if I can do it like this. See the skin came off beautifully, and all the moisture you see there is, is fat. <clears throat> the advantage of taking and cutting the skin off uh, after the smoking and the brining is that it becomes a lot more leathery, a lot tougher, so you're less likely to cut through the skin. It can go away. And then here you have the fillet, which is ready to cut into slices. It still means too thick to eat like that. 
I like to have it on bread and toast, you know, with some some mustard, some mustard mayo. Just mix some Coleman's or some whichever mustard you prefer in with mayonnaise and that and some nice sourdough. It's very nice and a much better alternative to farmed salmon. If like me you're a trout fisherman, you've access to uh, even if you don't go that often, if you take one or two fish from a trout fishery local to you, you're doing the environment a favour. And these these pieces are just put on the plates, I cover them with um, just cling film, leave it in the fridge and whenever I want a sandwich or some toast you can make those, they're also delicious just with you know, mixing into a salad, uh, you can use them with a the pasta and once smoked and brined we'll keep for a few days in the fridge. Now here I've got the other two trout fillets which I've cut into four pieces. These have been uh, dry aging in the fridge for two days. Uh, I've taken all the pin bones out now and if you look at the skin it's a lot drier than it was it's not and the meat itself is quite quite dry it doesn't feel as, as wet as it did before. The smell is absolutely not fishy so you don't want fish to smell fishy. Um, it often gets that fishy flavour or smell if it's sitting in its own juices for too long so by dry aging you prevent um, the fish sitting in its own juices. I'll show you how I do that in a minute. But this is, um, yeah, this looks really nice. And I am going to confit this over here. I've got some sunflower oil, which I put some apple, two slices of apple, uh, some lemon rind, some peppercorns, and some fennel seeds in. I've got that to gently simmer, just so that the oil takes on some flavor, then cool down again. You can do that today in advance, and then I'm going to put the put it up to about 60, 65 degrees. Put the trout in there, and then wait for the trout to hit an internal temperature of 42 degrees, and take it out. That's it. I mentioned earlier that I um, dry aged the trout. So how I do that at home? I don't have a professional dry aging fridge like a lot of restaurants or fish butcheries have. I use the vegetable compartment of the fridge and I've cut out a little rack that's in there on which meat or fish can sit with minimal contact. So now I've got my oil just on the 70 degrees. What I'm going to do is put the trout in. Sure, it's covered completely. Put another probe in one of the pieces of trout. And now we're going to wait for that trout to hit an internal temperature of 42 degrees. Should take about 8 minutes or so. So at the moment we're on 23. That will slowly rise. In the meantime, my leeks are sizzling away over there. As I'm not using a huge amount of oil, and um, cool down a little bit when I put the, the fish in. So, if that drops below 50 degrees, just use a little burst of heat to get it up again, anywhere between 50 and 70. So it's going to slowly decrease in heat and all. As soon as it gets to 51 or so, I'll Give it some more fire, just make sure not, that it doesn't get too hot. As you can see, the temperature of the trout is slowly climbing. 
read that to get to 42. So the fish has hit 42 degrees now, we're going to take it out. In the meantime, the carrots are frying away, the one that was steamed earlier. Let's see what the fish looks like. Now, as this fish has been sitting in oil all the time, it's important to use a fair amount of kitchen towel just to get all the oil off. You don't want to eat, to eat oily fish. The skin should just peel off like that now. There you go. And the hotter you let the internals of the fish get, the less firm it will be, the more cooked, as it were. This looks perfect to me. If you just look at the texture of the meat, it just breaks apart just like that. It's super soft and tender. So, good to go. some charred carrots.